Good morning. It's the first Sunday after Christmas and we're here in the Slocum living room to celebrate the day. I want to thank uh, Joe Botts for preparing our bulletin. I want to thank my wife, Victoria, who's going to be assisting with the liturgy. I want to thank everyone in our parish and congregation who's come together during this season of Christmas, and we will begin. Behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by, by what, what we have done and by what, what we have left undone. undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. To us a child is born. Come, Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter the gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Psalm 147, we'll say it by half verse, breaking at the asterisk. Hallelujah, how good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted. And binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars. And calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly. But casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds. And prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains. And green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds. And for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him. In those who await his gracious favor. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. And his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against his cold? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob. His statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not done so to any other nation. To them he has not revealed his judgments. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt my, in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. 
He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 19. O rule of the universe, Lord God, great, great deeds, deeds are they that you have done, done surpassing, surpassing human understanding. understanding. Your, your ways, ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King, King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Galatians. Now, before faith come, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir, through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 20. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his people, people on earth. earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory, Glory to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will, will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, 
This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 21. You are God, we praise you. You, you are, are the Lord, Lord we, we acclaim you. You, you are, are the eternal Father, Father. all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you came, man, to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. It's Christmas. Did you open your gifts? Did you open your presents? Uh, here in the Slocum living room, we have our Modest Christmas tree, we had gifts that we opened. A, uh, we've got a new little aquarium. I've got a, a, a pectoral cross that I'll get to wear when we're back investments again. Uh, we opened our gifts. Victoria got a book from family that she's looking forward to reading. I hope you opened your gifts. And I want to say how very appropriate that is for our season, certainly to give and receive gifts. And there's a sacramental sense to what we do, a, a sacramental, you know, like an out invisible sign of an inner and spiritual grace. Well, of course, we have the, the two primary sacraments and five other sacramental rites, but in a larger sense, in this life that we follow, this faith that we share, there is a, a sacramental sense to much of many outward and visible signs of inward and spiritual grace, love, connectedness, hope, joy. And so we share gifts. That includes sometimes physical gifts. I'm thankful for the gifts that we've received during this season. Thankful for the gift from the parish. But let me say the gifts are come in many different shapes and sizes, many different expressions of gift and sometimes even the very most significant gifts uh, can't be bought in a catalog can't be found online or in a store shelf the gift of love the gift of relationship the gift of hope but it still needs to be realized it needs to be expressed in physical terms expressed tangibly expressed visibly the most important things aren't just in abstract, but when they are engaged in life, can be touched in life. And so it is with the life of God. I mean, God is God eternally, from beyond all time, before and after, beyond our knowing, omnipotent, omnipresent, God's life. We affirm to be triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And yet, the life of God, the gift of God, is made flesh, as we hear in the Gospel of John. And, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. 
And that word, that capital W word, is not just like some word in a sentence, like the and or but. It's the word, the expression, the utterance of God. The second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, was made flesh and dwelt among us, fully divine, fully human. Our gift, our gift. In other words, not just an abstraction, not just a law, not just a principle, not just an understanding, but tangibly, visibly, uh, Jesus held by Mary as a baby, Jesus embracing his followers, Jesus wept at, at the death of Lazarus, Jesus sat at meals with his disciples, Jesus who will bleed and die on the cross, tangible, visible, alive, in the world, engaged in the life that we live, in the here and now, just with us, not just beyond the clouds, not out above alone, but here, here with us, in the life we live, facing the challenges and the heartbreak and the loss and also the joys and the celebrations and the possibilities that we live, that Jesus walks the walk with us and Jesus shares our life so that we may share his life. It's a gift. It's a gift. We don't earn it. We don't manipulate it. We don't force it. It's a gift. Now, it's a gift that demands of us <laughs> everything, but it's a gift. It's freely offered to us. It's the gift of God's life with us, and it's real. It's tangible. Jesus comes into the world. His disciples and others hear what he says. They witness his miracles, witness his teaching, hear what he has to say, the example he lives, the, the life that he offers. And it's a life that's real. It's not just pie in the sky, by and by. It's a life that we are to share, a life that we are to participate in. It's our gift. It's a gift that is enabled by God to help us to be the people that we can be in God's life, in God's sight, in God's community, so that we share the light and love of God with others. And as we share it, we'll know it even more deeply. It'll be even more fully our own as we offer it to others through our gifts, so that we, having received gifts, are called upon to pay it forward, to pay it out, to share it with others. And the amazing and wonderful and beautiful and magnificent thing about that is as we give the gift, it's not diminished, it grows. I mean, isn't that a wonderful thing when you realize that the gift that you have enhances, becomes stronger, becomes even more powerful when you offer it more fully. And so on this day in the Christmas season. Remember, we have 12 days in the Christmas season and not just one. We are especially reminded of God's great gift to us. God's gift of God's only Son, given in love. Why does God become human for us and our salvation? For love. And it's a love that we're meant to share. It's a gift that we're meant to offer in love with God, with others, in all our lives. Let's say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with us as we consider the renewal and mission of our church. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us by your Holy Spirit to perceive what is right and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our intercessions are four and three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I ask your prayers for those who've gone before us, Margaret Smith, Alice Stoddard, and Linda Morrissey. We celebrate the birthdays of Jim Ratliff and Mike Razor. We celebrate the anniversaries of Maureen and Will Ratliff, Mindy and Greg Camp, and Laura Freeman and Bill Kingsbury. We ask special prayers of well-being and strength for Kim, Yancey, Jim, Bev, Norm, Mabel, Susanna, Cynthia, Julia, April, Betty, Lisa, Virginia, Walker, and Beverly, as well as all those who suffer. We pray for emotional healing and strength for Patrick and Lori and the family of Randy. We also remember those in the armed services, both at home and abroad, and all who have suffered as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, including the Wilson family and the Steele family. We pray especially during this time of pandemic for healthcare workers, physicians, nurses, first responders, also all those in the society on the front lines of interacting with the public and others, those involved in law enforcement, fire protection, safety for our country, for those involved in daily activities, uh, store clerks, uh, repair people, all those who reach out to help others. 
I ask your prayers for those on our diocesan intercessory prayer list, St. Andrew, Fort Thomas, uh, the Venerable Jeffrey Queen, Rector. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, mercies we, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation of the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let me remind you to join us today for Christian Education at 1030, followed by Coffee Hour at about 11, both live on Zoom.